After a tragic incident, a young man promised that he would do anything to avenge his fellow villagers who perished in a massacre. His name was Denki, but while he was trying to get the justice he wanted, he gradually discovered his true identity. One night, in a gambling house in the village of Wutan Lu, a group of men were delighted because of their leader's winning streak. A few moments later, Denki came there to bet as well. After a few rounds, his opponents got annoyed of him because he was the only one who would always win in the game. Until they discovered his fraud, so Denki quickly ran away. It turned out that the contents of the pouch that he laid on the table for his bet were just rocks. While they were chasing Denki, there was also another encounter between a man and an armed group. The armed groups were from the Qin Kingdom, and they were chasing Zhao Qi, who was a disciple of the Sword Furnace. Zhao Qi was able to counter the attack of those who were chasing him, and that was the moment that he fought them all at once. He successfully defeated all his opponents, but there was one more group that came to fight him. They wanted to take the Lu sword from him, but Zhao Qi just laughed and told them to try getting it from him if they could. After what he said, the enemies rushed at the same time, but he was able to block their weapons. Until the wood that he was holding turned into a sword, then he used it to attack the enemies. He attacked the remaining opponent who was a woman named Rei. He could not believe that Rei was holding the autumn water sword which was also a sword from the sword furnace. He retaliated against her and the two of them fought until Rei had a chance to attack him with the power of her sword. But he did not want lose just like that, so he used the death technique sword hoping that it would kill Rei as well. After the sudden explosion, Denki came out because he was also hiding in the area and was covered by debris. He noticed the blood in the distance and also saw that the loose sword had been cut. When he picked it up, he saw Rei who seemed weak and was approaching him. So he helped her and brought her to his house to treat her wounds. When Rei regained consciousness, she asked for his name and he immediately introduced himself. The next day when Denki woke up, he checked on Rei's condition. Since her condition was still not improving, he went to town to buy medicine. But he met the man who also bet in the gamble with him last night. This man wanted to take revenge on him, but a child suddenly urinated on this man, so Denki was able to get away from him. He continued to run towards the town, but because it was so far away, he arrived there in the afternoon. After he paid, a man saw the loose sword and this surprised him. On his way back, he noticed that something was happening in their village, so he ran faster to get there. It turned out that the soldiers from the Qin Kingdom were attacking, and they were killing everyone they saw on their way. Rei tried to get up and she was surprised when a man came to her. While Denki's opponent was hiding with a woman and a child, the soldiers also tracked them down. They tried to run, but this man tripped that he decided to sacrifice his life, so the boy could escape. When Denki came there, he met the boy who helped him earlier. But before the child could get close to him, he was suddenly attacked from behind. In his anger, he rushed at Chen, but before he could get close to him, he was suddenly blocked by Rei who attacked him. When the enemies left, one of Chen's colleagues, named Gui, was left behind because he wanted to look for a new wife. Soon he saw a woman who was hiding from them. On the other hand, Denki had a dream about a tree, and after a while, he suddenly remembered Rei. Little did they know that he was still alive, and the townspeople quickly helped him. He was brought to a house where he was taken care of by a man, named Shinely, who noticed the loose sword when he bought medicine. He talked to the owner of the house and the merchant who manages the fish market, named Mao. They both know Zhao Qi because they were also from Sword Furnace. Shangli was surprised because when he looked at Denki Yi's wound, it seemed like the person who did it had no intention of killing him. Mao decided that he would cure Denki Yi with the power of his sword, so Shangli also left to go back to Wutong Lu. Mao approached Denki Yi to start healing him. She pointed her sword at the wound, and it healed after a few moments. But this caused her to become weak, and she suddenly lost consciousness. When the prince of the Qin kingdom, named Fuso, found out what happened to the village of Wutong Lu, he scolded the divine minister, known as General Liang. But Liang's reason that it was no different from what they were doing whenever they conquered other countries, he even added that they could get the great punisher sword even faster by that way. Fuso said that he already instructed Rei about the great punisher sword, so Liang did not need to worry about it. This was the reason why Chen was ordered to arrest Rei, and Liang sent a letter to him again, saying that if he caught Rei, he had to kill her right away. 
Meanwhile, when they went to Shangli at Wutong Lu, they saw that Gui had buried the woman he saw the other night. They did not know that he had made other bodies into zombies, or so-called bad demons, using his mutation sword, causing them all to be ambushed in the area. At night, Mao woke up after hearing someone open the door. As she approached the door, she felt that someone suddenly passed by behind her. It turned out to be Shang Li who wanted to attack her, fortunately, Deng Qi woke up and immediately stopped him. But he got away from Deng Qi's grip, so Deng Qi hit him with a chair. After a while, they saw other people behind the walls who also wanted to enter the house. Deng Qi picked up Mao and they quickly got out of there. As the zombies approached them, he remembered the boy in his village, so in his anger, he hit the zombies that were close to them. He apologized to those he did not save because he was useless and weak, and then he hugged Mao at the same time. Suddenly someone came and attacked the zombies. These were Chu Yin and Haku who were both disciples of the Sword Furnace. Deng Qi found out from Chu Yin who was behind the attack on Wutong Lu the other night. Chu Yin wanted to hear from Deng Qi about his plans since he already knew the truth. Deng Qi did not expect that Chu Yin also knew that he helped Rei who was from the Qing Kingdom. Meanwhile, Chen locked Rei up since she still had not obeyed Liang's order. He told Rei about Liang's order to kill her, but he told her that he would not follow it as long as she agreed to be his wife. After he left, Rei used her power to escape. She managed to get out of the prison and get past the guarding soldiers, but Chen was already waiting for her outside. The two of them fought until Rei had a chance to use her power on him so she could escape. The next morning, Deng Yi passed by a gambling den and noticed a man named Tiki because of his consecutive wins. So the guards approached him to take care of the situation, but since Tiki was still stubborn, they sent for Mao. But Mao and the two disciples of Sword Furnace were currently talking about what happened last night. The action of the Qin Kingdom to get the Great Punisher Sword was also included in their conversation, and Mao was sure that the enemies were heading to the Sword Furnace. So Chu Yin said that they would not just let them get hold of the Great Punisher Sword. It was not long when Mao heard someone calling her. Tiki was already outside the gambling house and was still talking to the guard, and as soon as they got there, Tiki immediately approached Mao. When he smelled her, this insulted Chu Yin and caused them to have a fight with the two women who were with Tiki. Chu Yin noticed that they were not fighting against real people, and when he attacked them, they saw their true form. Tiki immediately asked for payment for what happened to his colleagues, but Mao refused, so he just proposed for them to play a game. Deng Qi volunteered to represent Mao. He pulled the trigger first, and it was followed by Tiki whose face showed hesitation to pull the trigger of the weapon. Until they could only have two shots left, so Tiki suggested to Deng Qi that he should retreat. But Deng Qi still did not back down, and when he was about to pull the trigger, Chu Yin quickly stopped him. Then Deng Qi suddenly grabbed Tiki, but he just knocked him down. Tiki did not know that Deng Qi only intended to take the things he used to cheat in the games earlier. Because of this, he was now facing severe punishment. But Tiki suddenly offered them his help to prevent the spread of corpse spots on their bodies. He had noticed it from Mao earlier, and he also knew where it came from. He said that in order to stop it, they had to kill the one who did it, the host that controlled the zombies or by demons. Tiki let them borrow the special compass that would point to the current location of the host or Gui. Since Rei managed to escape, Chen took another woman who looked like her to be killed and sent the proof to Liang. Deng Qi immediately went to Gui's location, and when they got close to it, their horses suddenly got scared. For this reason, they decided to just walk and let the horses ran away from the area. They arrived in the village of Wutong Lu, and Deng Qi was stunned after seeing what happened to the village. They immediately started looking for the host until they found a zombie. Then the other zombies also approached them. After a while, someone suddenly choked Deng Qi, and it turned out to be the one he had a fight with in the gambling house. He picked up the wood near him and used it to hit the zombie. While they were fighting the zombies, they suddenly heard a horrible voice. It turned out to be just behind Deng Qi, and he easily grabbed him. After the enemy said that he was the cause of the deaths of the villagers, Deng Qi suddenly felt a strong power flowing through his body. Because of this, he easily overthrew Gui. He followed it up with another attack until Gui was forced to bring out his mutation sword. Xu Yin quickly took action to help Deng Qi. They attacked the enemy simultaneously until Gui ran away from them. 
But Denki managed to hold him, so Haku was able to stab and kill Goe immediately. Because of his death, the corpse spots on their bodies had also disappeared. Before they left there, Denki offered a prayer for his fellow villagers. It turned out that Rei was not far away and watching them that Denki also felt her press sins but she quickly left. A few hours later, Liang received what Chen had sent as proof that he had killed Rei. Meanwhile, Denki's group continued on their way to the sword furnace because Chu Yen was sure that Chen was already there. And this suspicion was right because Chen was currently trying to find the Great Punisher sword. They passed through the sulfur ground because they forgot the right way since they had not been able to go to the sword furnace for so long. Until they arrived to a city to rest and eat. After a while, they heard Tiki's voice so they went to him. When they saw him, Tiki was selling fake swords and he was saying that the weapons were made in a sword furnace. He added that one of the swords that he was selling was the famous Great Punisher sword. Xu Yan could not take his lies anymore, so he cut the fake sword that Tiki was presenting. Tiki felt embarrassed that he just decided to leave, then he asked the compass that he had let them borrow. But Haku said that it fell on the sulfur ground, so Tiki took the money that he was carrying and Tiki's group quickly ran away. When they caught Tiki, he was about to enter an inn to have fun. Since they did not have money, they were not allowed to enter it. But Denki saw that there was a job hiring poster for women and he thought of a plan. He pretended to be a woman and took Chu Yen with him. They went to the room where Tiki was checked in, but he recognized them immediately, so he quickly ran away. While Mao and Haku were waiting, the dog that Mao had fed earlier came to them while carrying their purse. In the afternoon, Chu Yen caught up with Tiki, and a few moments later, Denki also came there and immediately attacked Tiki. Because of this, Tiki let go of the explosive that he was holding, so Chu Yen quickly grabbed Denki and they jumped from the tower. Since they had nothing to take back from Tiki, they continued their journey to the sword furnace. Fuso summoned Liang after he found out what happened to Rei. He wanted to get the tiger talisman from Liang, but Liang did not want to give it to him because he wanted to get the Great Punisher Sword. Fuso knew that Liang planned to use the Great Punisher Sword in the Wei Kingdom to break the sword aura which the king placed to act as a barrier to the entire kingdom in preventing the flood. But Liang still had not given the tiger talisman, and it turned out that he already had his soldiers on guard to prevent Fuso from getting out of there. According to legend, the Great Punisher Sword had not yet been awakened because it had not yet found a worthy owner. After a few hours of travel, they finally arrived at the Furnace Sword. It had not been long when the soldiers of the Qin Kingdom also appeared and quickly surrounded them. Denki was so angry so Chuyin gave him a sword so that he could avenge his fellow villagers. They fought the soldiers, but because there were a lot of them, Chuyin thought of going up first. They decided to use the Molten Dragon for the first time by destroying the Jade in the gear. Because of this, some fell into the Molten Dragon and others were swallowed after it erupted. They immediately went to the very front of the Sword Furnace and Chen showed himself to them. Denki did not even think twice about rushing to the enemy, while Chu Yen and the others were attacked by the disciples of Chen. The other soldiers managed to stop Denki's attack on Chen. When he escaped from them, he tried to attack Chen again, but he still failed. Chen looked at the wound on his chest, and he did not expect that Rei failed to kill him. He strangled Denki to throw him into the sword furnace. But it did not happen because Rei suddenly came there to save him. It was here that Chen found out that Rei did not kill Denki on purpose that night. So in his anger, he kicked Denki. Fortunately, Denki was able to hold onto the chain. After seeing his companion's condition, he told Chu Yen that he would throw himself into the furnace, and if he awakened the Great Punisher Sword, he wanted them to avenge him. When he jumped into the furnace, Chen laughed out loud because he was complacent that it was impossible for Deng Qi to awaken the Great Punisher Sword. But he was mistaken because Deng Qi was the only one who could wield the Great Punisher Sword, and was the one chosen to own it. So just a few seconds later, they were shocked that he came back and was still alive. Then Denki also pulled out the Great Punisher Sword from the furnace. As Mao continued to fight, his opponent tried to kill her, but she just transformed into black smoke to avoid his attack. But because of her illness, the enemy caught her once again. By the time she saw the black butterfly, she decided to use her terrifying power. She attacked her opponent, and since the enemy did not avoid it, only his clothes were left after that. Haku saved Chu Yen from being bound. When the enemy attacked them, they both fell into its web. 
Then the enemy sent her disciples out to attack them. Xu Yan used Zhao Qi's broken sword and buried it in the wall which released electricity and it caused the wall to fell to the opponent. After Deng Qi pulled out the Great Punisher sword, the molten in the entire sword furnace gradually disappeared when the Great Punisher sword absorbed it. Shen still could not believe that Deng Qi had awakened this powerful sword. Deng Qi immediately attacked and managed to injure him. Shen tried to ask Rei for help so they could get the Great Punisher sword, but she replied that she was only following the prince's orders. And the prince's order to her was to prevent Liaoying or the Divine Minister from getting this sword. In Shen's anger, he retaliated against Deng Qi until he was able to remove the sword from him and he had a chance to knock him down. But Rei attacked him and managed to stab him to his side. Shen just took it off, and when he saw Deng Qi got up, he poured out his anger on him. He did not stop attacking him with his sword, while Deng Qi was just blocking Chen's attack on him. Shen managed to knock him down, but Rei came there to save him again. Shen tried to reach for Rei's hand, but she preferred to fall with Deng Qi. They survived the fall and took shelter in the cave. Rei used too much power of her sword that it was already affecting her body and she needed help. Deng Qi hugged her until her body temperature returned to normal. After a few hours, Rei suddenly regained consciousness, while Denki was still lying on top of her who had also fallen asleep. The next day, they moved to the abandoned house near the border between the Qin Kingdom and the Wei Kingdom. While they were waiting for their dinner to be cooked, they discussed why there was no one living in the house they moved to. Rei had a suspicion that the former resident did not want to be caught between the conflict of the two kingdoms. And one of the reasons for this conflict was because of the Great Punisher Sword. Deng Qi mentioned that he felt as if he had used this sword before. So he asked Rei if she felt the same about the Autumn Water Sword, but it turned out that he was the only one who felt this way. Rei asked him if he was afraid to die. He replied that he was still afraid of dying because his life had barely begun. And because of this, he would do everything to survive and to live. When he asked this to Rei, Rei answered the opposite. At night, when they were about to go to sleep, Denki showed her the noodles that he got and said that he was sure that they would have a good breakfast the next day. A few hours later, Denki woke up because of the smoke and when he got up, he saw Ray in the kitchen. He approached her and he found out that she tried to cook the noodles, but it burned. To avoid Ray from being upset, he forced himself to eat it. But Ray knew that he was just pretending to like the food that he was eating. As she was watching the moon, she felt that someone was approaching them. When she approached the road, Ray saw a man who was running, but was suddenly attacked from behind. This was done by Liang's men because this man discovered Liang's secret plan to attack the Wei Kingdom. When Ray heard this, she stepped on a branch that his opponents hurt her. In this situation, Deng Qi and Ray were forced to fight them. Deng Qi was able to break their sword, and they easily defeated them. They immediately approached the man, but after he pointed something and mentioned the city of Daliang which was the capital of the Wei Kingdom, he also died. They went to the location where the man pointed and saw the army of the Qin Kingdom preparing to attack Dalian city. On the other hand, Liang was also facing Qin who was begging not to punish him for his failure in the mission that was given to him. So Qin gave him another chance to carry out another mission that Qin must be able to complete. A few hours later, he also positioned his army for the attack. While the ministers in the Wei Kingdom were worried because the king was not facing them. Little did they know that their current king was just a puppet of the real king. Princess Bai recalled the incident three years ago, their king transformed into a sword aura to stop the flood and protect the entire Wei Kingdom. A few moments later, the king suddenly appeared to give her the courage to face the challenges that their kingdom was now facing. Xian's group came there to help the Wei Kingdom fight the Qin Kingdom's army. Because the puppet king could not fulfill his role, Princess Bai became the commander of the kingdom. Xu Yan did not want the Wei Kingdom to suffer the fate of the Zhao Furnace of Swords at the hands of the Qin Kingdom, so they decided to help the Wei Kingdom. Deng Qi and Rei intercepted the Qin Kingdom's army bearing a report and successfully got it from the enemies. Due to the large number of the enemy, they decided to flee to Daliang City. In order for the enemy not to chase them, they went through the river. A few moments after Princess Bai sent the enemy's messengers away, Rei and Deng Qi crossed the other side of the river. Mao and the others were so happy to see Deng Qi that they immediately approached them, but after they saw Rei, they were immediately alerted. Since Rei was from the Qin Kingdom, they still could not forgive what her companions did. 
But Denki tried to stop them and said that it was not the right time for them to fight, and they also have something to say to the king of the Wei Kingdom. Suddenly, Princess Bite approached them and said that she was appointed by the king to rule the kingdom temporarily. Denki immediately handed over what they had seized from the Qin army. When Princess Bai opened it, she was surprised to read the forbidden technique called Abi. This was the technique used in the Changping that killed 10,000 people. Denki had a hunch that this might be the Qin kingdom's next step after they failed to get the great punisher sword that were supposed to use to destroy the sword aura. He asked Princess Bai if the sword aura could stop this technique, but even the princess was not sure about it. So he begged Chu Yin to help the Wei Kingdom first and talk about their problem with Rei later. Rei said that her only mission was to stop Liang. She knew that Prince Fuso would not allow Liang to use a forbidden technique to conquer another land. Chu Yin wondered about Liang's possible strategy on the attack and the timing of the activation of the Abi. It was here that Denki said that he observed the land of the Wei Kingdom and he saw a place where the entire city could be seen from afar. He had a suspicion that it was possible for the enemy to pretend that they were going to attack in order to lower the city's defenses and cause chaos. After hearing this, Princess Bai would make sure that she would increase the security of the gates. The next morning, while they were talking, they heard the beginning of the invasion of the Qi Kingdom army. Denki told the others to help Princess Bai to protect the other gates, and he begged Rei to watch over Liang and prevent him from carrying out the Abi. While he along with a few members of the Cloud Water Palace would go to the place he mentioned the previous day and carry out an appropriate plan based on the current situation of Daliang City. When Xu Yan and the others left, he gave Princess by the pouch that she would only open if the Abi was activated completely and the sword aura was destroyed. Not long after, the Qin Kingdom's army entered the city. Fortunately, the citizens of the city were able to hide quickly. While the soldiers were stopping the Qin army, Chien's group also came there to help. When the other enemies came, Princess Bai used the power of her sword to knock them down. Meanwhile, as Denki went to the forest, they were ambushed by the enemies. Denki was surprised to see Chen as the leader of those who attacked them. They fought them until only he and Chen were left. They continued to exchange attacks until Denki was able to injure Chen. That was the moment when Chen used his blood to further strengthen the power of his sword. He repeatedly attacked Denki until Denki let go of his sword which gave Chen a chance to stab him. When Chen was about to kill him, Denki avoided it and used the wooden statue that he took from Wutong Lu and aimed at Chen's throat. Because of this, he completely defeated him and he was able to avenge his fellow villagers. Rei went to the base camp of the Qin Kingdom, and after she got rid of the guards, she immediately made a follow-up attack in the interior. But when she entered it, Liang was no longer there, then she saw the map and learned about his current location. It turned out that he was in the highest building of the Cloud Water Palace, and he also killed all the disciples of Princess Bai. Rei immediately went to him, but Liang was already starting to perform the Abi. Denki and even the citizens of Daliang City had noticed this. Meanwhile in the kingdom of Qin, Prince Fuso was still guarded by the soldiers left by Liang that he had not been able to leave his room. But he was surprised when someone suddenly attacked the guards, then the queen entered who was the one who did it. When the Abi was finally activated, it caused panic among the citizens of Daliang city. Suddenly, Princess Bai spoke and stopped those who wanted to leave the kingdom. It turned out that she had read the contents of the pouch, and it stated that if the Abi was activated, they all had to leave Daliang City. So she told the soldiers to open the gates and guide the citizens to Dongshan. Mao was worried about Denki, so Princess Bai also showed them what Denki had written which stated that they should not be worried about him and Rei. Rei learned that the prince was imprisoned for allegedly betraying the Qin Kingdom after he refused to attack the Wei Kingdom. Liang also intended to kill him too because he was not following the Qin Kingdom's order. But she said that between the two of them, Liang was the one who disobeyed the rules of the Qin Kingdom. She added that she would not let what happened in Guanai City again, and that was the moment they started fighting. Liang managed to stab her in the hand, and when he was about to end her life, Denki suddenly came there to stop him. The two of them fought, and it was here that Liang found out that Denki had defeated Chen. Rei had also helped Denki, but they still were having a hard time fighting Liang. After a few moments, the Abi hit the sword aura that it broke, and the flood immediately engulfed the entire Dalian city. 
But the Great Punisher's sword suddenly lit up and Denki felt the very strong aura that it possessed, so he immediately attacked Leon. He retaliated against Denki, but Rain moved quickly to block him. Then Liang pushed her causing her to fall, luckily, Denki was able to hold her. The Abi started sucking things and it got stronger that even them were slowly being absorbed in it as well. In order to save Denki, Rei decided to let go from his grip, causing her to be absorbed by the Abi. Princess Bai was on top of the mountain watching the whole kingdom being swallowed by the flood. While Mao and the others were worried about the situation of Denki. After a few moments, as Denki was approaching the Abi, he suddenly awoke in his other persona. Because of this, the powerful forces that was coming from the Abi no longer work on him. He immediately attacked Leon who could not believe the strength that he possessed. Leon could feel fear because he seemed facing a different persona who was stronger compared to the Denki he fought earlier. Then the Great Punisher sword caught fire, so Leon thought that Denki had reached the Nine Realms of Longevity. Their fight continued until Liang suddenly remembered someone from Denki. For this reason, he was confused as to who Denki really was. When his sword got a crack, it also directly affected the Abi, including the wounds he received. After a few moments, his sword completely broke, and it was here that Denki had the opportunity to defeat him. Then it was here that he remembered a person named Jean. When Liang fell, Denki also fell unconscious after he weakened. The Abi is also gradually disappearing, so they thought that Denki might have succeeded in the mission. Prince Fuso came there with the Queen's staff, named Lei, to return Liang to the Qin Kingdom. Xian's group also searched for Denki, and after a while, they also tracked him down. They brought him to Mao's house, and after a few hours when he opened his eyes, he once again lost consciousness. When Liang's wounds were healed, he went to Prince Fuso to apologize but he did not think that the queen had returned to the palace. According to the queen, she expected Liang to guide the prince, but he was already making his own decision in the conquest. Liang's reason that everything he did was only for the Qin kingdom. The queen also wanted to know who defeated him, then Liang remembered Denki and his other persona, named Jin. Denki dreamed of Jin then the days he spent with Rei and with Qin's group. And when he saw a woman laughing, that was when he woke up again. This is the end of the last episode of Sword Dynasty. I hope you like it and give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss newly uploaded videos. Thank you for watching.